So yesterday I was trying to design a feature module in Angular 7 and the feature module provided a my service class and the my service class had to require some sort of options which you can see I'm providing to the constructor here as the my server options. Now my server options is a type which can be injected using the dependency injection container and you can see is defined here in the same class with some default configuration values for something called retry count and retry interval. It's just made up an example here. Now, ideally, what I'd like is for these default values to be used out of the box, but for the developer to be able to provide override default values when they import this feature module into the parent application. Now, ideally, if we look over in the app module, I'd like to do something like this where I import my service module and then I use the for root static method pattern to provide some default configuration values. Now the issue that I ran into is that this object here isn't a type it's just an instance of object with these key values which means that we have to find some way to take this object and translate it into an instance of this class so the dependency injection container can inject it into the my service class when the my service class is being instantiated. Now we could theoretically take this object and provide it in our service as a dependency injection token and then we could do something like you know my options token like this and we could sort of you know get that to work but to be honest I really really find this to be very unattractive and this is purely aesthetic uh, I don't like having a lot of jank inside of my constructor and plus I feel like it, it, it kind of just crosses that line between treating this class as an independent class, independent from Angular versus now like this really starts to feel like it's tied into the Angular framework. So what I'd like to do is again be able to take this my service options full on type and generate it based on the four root options that I pass into my uh, feature module. Now to do that, I, it took me quite a long time to figure out how to do that, but basically over an hour of some trial and error and looking at various uh, code in the Angular repository, because the problem is I'm using the ahead of time or the AOT compiler, which limits the way that you can use factory functions inside of your feature module. So what I had to do was extract a feature, uh, extract the factory function and use an intermediary injection token to uh, provide these options to my factory function. So let's take a look at the my service module and see what I'm talking about. So here's my service module and you can see we have the static for root method which is a pattern uh, that's been formulated in the Angular ecosystem and it will take this options object which is again this options object that we're passing here to the for root method. So it will take that options object and it will provide it in the dependency injection container using an intermediary injection token. Now again, I don't want to provide this injection token to my my service class, which I could certainly do at this point, but again, I, I find that to be janky, so I don't want to do that. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm using that intermediary injection token as a dependency to this factory function provide my service options. Now provide my service options has to be extracted as a top level exported function. Otherwise the AOT compiler complains that we have inline function expressions inside our metadata. So if we look down here at our provide my service options factory function, you can see that it takes this options object, which is the object that we've passed to the for root method, which has then been translated into a for root options token injection token which is then being defined as a dependency to our factory function, which the dependency injection container is then injecting as the first argument to our factory. Now that this is exported as a top level exported factory function, we can take that raw options object and translate it into an actual instance of the my service options type. And here you can see that I'm pushing the values from that options object into the properties of the my service options and then I'm returning this my service options. So essentially what this factory function is doing is taking this type and making it available inside of the dependency injection container. This means that when the dependency injection container 
need to then instantiate an instance of my service, it will look for an instance of my service options, which we have inside of our feature module created based on the for root options passed in by the calling context. Now to test all this, uh, I'm simply in my app component asking for the my service instance to be injected and I'm just logging it out. So if we jump over into the browser and we refresh here, what we can see is that in the my service constructor that injected options instance, right, that instance of my service options is injected here with our overrides, retry count three, retry interval 5000, and then my app component constructor, which is injecting an instance of the my service type, you can see it contains that options object internally, which has, again, our overrides. So uh, because we're using the ahead of time compiler, not the JIT or the just in time compiler, we're limited by the way we can configure our feature module. Specifically, we have to pull out, um, where's the module? We have to pull out our factory functions into top level exported functions so that the AOT compiler can locate them. And then in order to translate the raw for root option data bag into an actual type, we have to use a factory function and that intermediary dependency injection token. And again, that's what allows us to pass in a type to our my service class without having to use uh, something like the inject metadata, which again, 100% personal preference, I find to be very janky and unattractive, and I try to avoid it when possible. And uh, anyway, it took me a while to figure this out, so I'm mostly providing it here so that I can reference it later when I inevitably forget again. Uh, but in case anyone else runs into some of the errors that I, er I came across, uh, this might just help from a, from a Googling standpoint.